Thank you, Meredy and Josh, and good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph First United Methodist Church. Thank you for choosing to join us today. My name is Judy Thompson, and I am your worship greeter this morning. This is Hunger Pot Sunday, and the pot's right here. If you would like to contribute to the funds that help support the soup kitchen and other food sources around the area, you may uh, bring that up on the first hymn. I have a verse for you, and it's from Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Our first hymn this morning is America. You can find that on page 697 in your hymn or watch on the follow along on the screens behind me. Please stand if you are willing and able. Thank you. And I hope you all have a happy 4th of July. It's wonderful to celebrate our country. And um, now we're going to um, proclaim our faith together. It's on page 883, if you want to follow along in your hymnal. Otherwise, on the screens behind me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God, 
We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. May be seated. Well, good morning, church. I'm Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here at St. Joe First, and we are glad that you've chosen to worship with us in person, or if you're worshiping online, we're glad you're with us as well, and we pray that God blesses your heart as you worship him this morning. This time, I just want to share a few announcements with you. I want to remind you that uh, coffee time, um, we're just going to do coffee in the lobby for a while, so as you come in or as you leave, you can grab a cup of coffee. Uh, the fellowship hall is pretty torn up and a little dusty for the, from the project, so I think we're going to cancel uh, coffee time through the month of July, and we'll maybe hopefully have it back up and running in August here, uh, depending on how fast they get that HVAC system in there. Uh, but please, help yourself to a cup of coffee as you come in or go from the lobby there. Um, also just want to remind you that, um, uh, or maybe invite you to this, you may not know about this, but this Tuesday we're going to be doing a courtyard cleanup um, from uh, 5 to 7 p.m. We hope you'll come, help pull some weeds, trim some bushes, do some edging, and let's uh, get God's house looking really, really nice again for, for the summer season. So we hope you'll come and, and be a part of that as well. Also, just want to remind you that Kids Camp is coming up July uh, 18th through the 22nd from 6 to 8.15 p.m. Uh, if you'd like to help, please uh, talk to Will Flaherty, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. I'm sure he'd love to have you help out. Uh, if you want to register your kids or grandkids or neighbors, uh, neighborhood kids, um, please go to our church website and register them online there. I uh, just also want to remind you that we have a lot of wonderful caring ministries. We're trying to get the Stephen ministry back up and going, and a class will be starting here probably in, the fall, in August. And if you'd like to be a part of that class and be trained to be a Stephen minister so you can uh, really help a lot of people that are going through some tough times, Please talk to Savannah Tucker or, or myself or call the church office. We'd love to get your name on that list so that when that class starts up, we'll contact you about that class. We also have a hospitality team that we're trying to form. If you have that friendly face and the joy of the Lord in your heart and you think you'd be a, a, a good greeter and uh, don't mind going up and shaking people's hands and welcoming people to the church, we would love to have you on the hospitality team. And once again, if you're interested in that, talk to Savannah Tucker, our director of congregational care. I also want to let you know that this Friday, we're going to do a game night here at the church from 6 to 9. Um, so if you'd like to come, bring your favorite card game or board game. We'll probably have some snacks out, and we'll just have a, an enjoyable evening together, fellowshipping and playing games together. So we hope you'll come and be a part of that as well. Well, I don't have any other announcements. I hope you've enjoyed the beautiful weather the Lord has given us the last few days. I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. Let us now continue to worship the Lord by turning in our hymnals to page 696, and we'll sing verses 1 through 3 of America the Beautiful, or you can follow along with the words on the screen.
you to bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, we thank you for being a powerful, amazing God. A God who helped this country earn its freedom and has turned this nation into one of the greatest nations this world has ever seen. And we pray, God, on this 4th of July Sunday or the 4th of July weekend that you would return our country to you. God, help us to pass laws that are good and pleasing in your sight. Help us as citizens to live the lives that you want us to live. Lives of righteousness, goodness, kindness, graciousness, generosity. Help us, God, to be the people that you want us to be. Help us to do the things that you want us to do and to say the things that you want us to say and be willing to go wherever you would want us to go. May you use us to grow your kingdom here on earth. Use us to help the poor, the needy, the hurting, the struggling, the spiritually lost, those that are confused. God, I pray your blessing upon this church and upon all the churches all over this, all over this globe that are faithfully preaching and teaching your word. Bless those churches. Fill their sanctuaries with people who have a desire to worship you and to draw closer to you. Grow their Bible studies, their Sunday school classes, their, their ministries and outreaches to the poor and the needy and the hurting and the struggling. God, help us to become the church that you want us to become. And may we do all that you want us to do and say what you want us to say and, and reach those that you want us to reach. God, fill us with your love, your grace, your truth, and your power today and every day. Give us the strength to, to handle whatever this world throws our way. Give us that holy boldness and courageousness to, to confront evil, to resist Satan and, and, and his demons and, and the evil things that are in this world, to stand up for what is good and right, to fight for what is noble and pure. God, we thank you for the people that have given their lives to fight for the freedoms of this country, those that fought in the Revolutionary War and, and the War of 1812 and the wars, the World War I and II. Thank you for all these people that have served in our military over the, over the years, Lord, protecting our country, fighting for our freedoms. We thank you for all of them. And God, we pray your blessing upon this country and upon its future. And God, we not only thank you for our country, but we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving us so much, Jesus, that you would leave perfect paradise and come to this world. That you would show us a better way to live, to live a life of loving God and loving others and, and being kind and generous. And then you generously laid down your life at the cross to pay the penalty not for your sins, but for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for your life. Thank you for your death, for your resurrection, for the gift of salvation that you now offer to anyone who would place their faith and trust in you and would repent of their sins. Thank you also for giving us the gift of eternal life someday in heaven with you and for adopting us into your family, making us your children. God, you have blessed us in so many ways, and for all of it, we say thank you. And at this time, we especially thank you, Jesus, for the gift of prayer and for teaching your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. This time I'd like to thank Josh Goins for filling in on the organ today for Jim Krause. And I want to thank Meredith and Jake for playing and offering their gifts and talents to the Lord. And at this time I hope you enjoy this special music piece.
all God's people said? Before I share this morning's scripture, I want to tack on one partial announcement uh, regarding Kids Club. Uh, Some of you may have seen this coming in, but we do have a donation board for snack materials. If you would like to pick up uh, a snack card to donate, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions, talk to me after the service. Now for today's scripture. Today's scripture, we're continuing on in the book of 2 Corinthians. We're in chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And the word of God says, This is why we do not get discouraged. Given what we have received, given that we have received this ministry in the same way that we have received God's mercy. Instead, we reject secrecy and shameful actions. We don't use deception. We do not tamper with God's word. Instead, we command ourselves to everyone's consents in the, su- in the sight of God by the public announcement of the truth. And even if our, val- or, yeah, even if our gospel is veiled, It is veiled to those who are on the road to destruction. And God and the God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not have faith. So they cannot see the light of the gospel that reveals Christ's glory. Christ is the image of God. We do not preach about ourselves. Instead, we preach about Jesus Christ as Lord. And we describe ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God said that the light should shine out into the darkness. He is the same one who shone in the hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Will, for reading God's word to us this morning. We know God's word is holy and true and can be trusted. Well, we find ourselves in the Second Corinthians series once again. I want to remind you of what we've talked about so far. We began this several weeks ago when I talked about when we feel like we are dying physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, what do we do? I tried to remind you then on that Sunday that God loves us, that God desires to to deliver us, to save us, and that he promises to never leave us or forsake us, but will walk with us through the hardest trials and uh, in life and, and through the struggles of life. Then the second week, our Reverend Jim Krause gave a, a message on, on fragrances and aromas, and he encouraged us to be a fragrant aroma that attracted people to God in his church, not to be a pungent odor that repels people from God and his church. And then last Sunday, I gave a message on what does the Holy Spirit bring us? And we talked about ten things that the Holy Spirit brings us or gives us But the three that came from the 2 Corinthians passage were that the Holy Spirit brings us life, freedom, and transformation. Today we're going to continue in the 2 Corinthians series, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the ministry that God has given us, the ministry from the Lord. And um, so I want to start out by kind of asking you a question. Have you, have you ever wondered, what am I going to do with my life? Or if you're a Christian, the bigger question may be, God, what do you want me to do with my life while I'm here on this earth? You know, when I was in high school, I had some friends that knew exactly what they wanted to do with their lives once they graduated high school. Then I had another group of friends that had no clue what they wanted to do with their life once they graduated. And then there was me. I knew exactly what God wanted me to do, but I was fighting that and resisting that call. And I was trying to come up with my own plan. Thank God in college I finally gave in to God's plan for my life. And and what do you know? God's plan has been great and amazing and so much better than my plan. And I'm thankful that I finally wised up and uh, did God's plan for my life instead of my own plan. And as a youth pastor and as someone that, uh, as a youth pastor for many years and worked with young adults, I ran into a lot of young adults, too, who struggled with questions like this, too. What am I supposed to do with my life? What does God want me to do? Why am I here? You know, some biblical scholars and theologians have tried to answer these questions. One has said that we are here to worship God and to enjoy him forever. Others say we're here to love God and love others. 
still others say that we are here to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I would agree with all of these. We are here to worship God and to enjoy him forever. We are here to love God and to love others. We are here to help make disciples of Jesus Christ and to teach them all that God has commanded us. I personally believe God is the one who gave all of us our lives, our passions, our talents, our skills. And these things will then dictate a little bit about who we are and who we become, the careers we choose and the ministries that the Lord has planned for us. But the one thing I want us to walk away today knowing, that I want all Christians to know is this, we have all been given a ministry from the Lord. There are things that God wants you to do. There are people that he wants you to help. There are people that he wants you to impact for the kingdom of God. I personally believe God wants some of you to be teachers. And he wants you to live out the Christian faith in front of your students. He wants you to be his hands, his heart, and his voice in the public schools. Others of you, I believe God wants you to be doctors and nurses and to care for his beautiful and wonderful creations that he dearly loves. Still others of you, he wants you to be construction workers, electricians, plumbers, welders, to build homes for people to live in and raise their families, to build businesses where people can work and earn money to take care of themselves and their families. Others of you, God might be just calling you to work in a store or a restaurant, to be that smiling face that brings some cheer to someone's, someone's life and to be there to assist and help others. Wherever you work, I hope you see that as part of your mission field and the people around you as part of the, as a part of the people that you are to minister to while here on earth. I also hope all of you will offer some of your time and talents to, the church, to a local church and to a nonprofit organization in the community that helps other people. You know, the fun part of being a Christian is trying to figure out where you fit best in the body of Christ and where you fit best to serve in, the, in your community. Maybe you have musical talents and, and, and can play special music pieces for the church or sing in the choir, or play in the handbell choir, or play in the worship band. Maybe you have teaching skills, and you could lead a Bible study or a Sunday school class. Maybe you're gifted to work with, and you relate well with children or teens, and you do a wonderful job serving and helping out at the Spark Kids Club, or the Kids Camp, or a youth group and handing down that faith to the next generation and showing God's love to the next generation. Or maybe you have very practical skills like knitting and sewing, and you could knit prayer shawls that we give to people that are sick and just need to know that God cares about them and that the church is praying for them. Or maybe you could sew and help make clothes for poor people all over the world. Maybe you have good leadership skills, and you could help lead a commission, a council, or a team here at the church. Figure out what your gifts, your passions, your skills are. Figure out where you can serve best in the body of Christ. Then serve and minister to those around you. You know, in 2 Corinthians 4.1, Paul mentions that he has received a ministry from God. I hope all of us realize that we have received a ministry from the Lord. And now it is your job to figure out what your ministry will be in the church, the community, and the world. In this passage that, that I had Will read to you this morning, uh, Paul talks about his ministry, and he kind of tells us some things that he avoids that he doesn't do, and he doesn't want to see Christians do in their ministries, and then he mentions some things that he does do. The first thing that Paul tells us not to do is he says, don't keep God's truth a secret. He brings up the issue of secrecy. In verse 2 he says, we reject secrecy. 
You see, God wants everyone to know his truths. So don't keep God's truth a secret. God tells us to go and make disciples of all nations. He tells us to teach them everything that God has commanded us. A huge part of your ministry and my ministry, our ministry should be revealing God's truth to others by our lifestyle, our actions, and our words. We should be living out the Christian faith and the Christian teachings in front of others. We should be doing good and kind and generous things for others. Our words should be full of love, kindness, grace, and truth. You see, Christianity is not some secret society where you can only know the hidden truths if you, be, if you join the group. Or the more money that you give to the church, the more hidden secrets will be revealed to you. On the contrary, God wants us to share his truths with everyone. He wants his truths to be shared with all the nations and with all the people living on this planet. So if you want your ministry to be successful, don't keep the truths that you've learned about God a secret. Share those truth with us, truths with others. Live out those truths in front of your family, your friends, your co-workers, wherever you are. The second thing Paul tells us is don't do shameful things that may ruin your ministry. In verse 2 he says we reject secrecy and shameful actions. How many people have we seen ruin their ministry by doing a shameful action? This might give away how old I am a little bit, but I, can, I think most of you guys are, will know some of these people too. How many of you guys remember Jim and Tammy Baker? They were huge televangelists, and then sexual scandal and fraud brought down their ministry. How many of you guys remember Jimmy Swaggart, and then, and then in 1988 was caught having a sexual affair with somebody? And that brought down his ministry. And the list could go on and on. We could list a lot of people whose ministries have been brought down be because of a shameful action, a hidden secret sin, not running their ministries the way God would want them to run their ministries. Many people have hurt their ministries by lying, stealing, cheating, or other shameful acts. Don't be one of them. In verse 2, Paul also says we, do, we don't use deception and we, do not and we do not tamper with God's word. You want to have a successful ministry to your family, your friends, your co-workers, and those around you? Then don't deceive them. Tell them the truth. Don't lead them astray. Rather, lead them to the way, the truth, and the life. That is, lead them to Jesus Christ. You know, God's holy word tells us not to lie and not to deceive. Rather, we are to speak the truth in love. And we are to live a life of honesty and good deeds. Paul also tells us not to tamper with God's word. You know, the Bible is a holy book. It is a book written from the Heavenly Father to his children. And in this book, in this love letter, God reveals who he is, what he has done, what he will do in the future. It reveals to us what is right and wrong, what is good and what is bad, what is sinful and what is not. It also reveals to us how God wants us to live. You know, someone... I personally believe you know someone is tampering with God's word when for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, the church and Christians have believed and taught this about a certain topic. Then culture and society change their views. And next thing you know, you begin to see people say, oh, that's not what the Bible really says. And they begin to reinterpret the scriptures to make it say what they want it to say. To say what culture now says is good. We are told not to tamper with God's word. It is good and perfect just the way it is. In 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 through 4, Paul talks about a time when people will no longer hold on to sound teaching, but will turn from the truth and turn to myths, things that are not true. 
then again, in Romans 16, 17 through 20, Paul warns against people who come to teach the, sorry, who come to them teaching things contrary to the doctrines they have been taught. And how Christians in Rome should avoid these people as they do not really serve the Lord. For through their flattery and smooth speech, they will deceive people and lure people away from the truth. In 2 Peter 3, the Apostle Peter talks about people twisting the scriptures to get them to say what they want them to say. In Revelation 22, the Apostle John, at the very end of his letter, talks about what will happen to anyone who tries to add or delete the words from the book of Revelation. And let me just say that punishment is not a good one. Over and over again, the scriptures tell us not to tamper with them, not to manipulate them or twist them, not to edit them so they say what we want them to say. You want to have a successful ministry? Don't tamper with God's word and try to make it say what you think it should say. Just tell people what God's holy word says. And let the truths of God and his Holy Spirit convict hearts and change lives. We've all been called to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. We've all been told by Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them all that I have commanded you. Then there are other verses like Psalm 118, 17 that, say, that says, I will not die but live and tell of the works of the Lord. The prophet Isaiah considered to be one of the greatest prophets by the Jews, says this, How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation. Psalm 105, 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. All these scriptures tell us to publicly proclaim God to the world. We are to announce his truth to everyone. You want to have a successful ministry? Don't be afraid to publicly proclaim God and his truth to others. Then in verse 3, Paul teaches us an important truth. He says this, the gospel message is veiled to unbelievers, those on the road to destruction. To the believer, God's truths are evident. For they have been revealed to us by God and his Holy Spirit. But to the non-believer, God's word doesn't make sense. God's truth is covered with a veil and they cannot see it or comprehend it till someone comes and explains it to them. Why is God's word veiled to a non-believer? Paul says the God of this age, that is Satan, has blinded the minds of those who do not have faith so that they cannot see the light. They do not understand God or his teachings. We, God's children, you and I, we must unveil God's word and truth to them. We need to help them see the light. Help them go from blindness to seeing the truth. How do we help people come out of the darkness into God's marvelous light? How do we help the blind to see? We do it by living out the Christian faith in front of them. We do it by sharing what we have learned about God with others. We be kind and generous, and we do what we can to help other people. And we boldly and courageously take God's light into the dark and broken world that we live in. And while we're there, we be as real and honest with people as we can. We tell them that this is what God's word says. I also want to give a little bit of advice. And when we're interacting with people that are non-believers, we can't come across as people who are smarter than them or who are better than them. We need to come across to them as we are simply servants of Jesus Christ, sent here to bring you a wonderful message of love, forgiveness, grace, hope, and truth. All of you have received a ministry from the Lord. May you figure out what your ministry is. And I pray that God blesses your ministry. May God use you to open the eyes of the spiritually blind, 
May God use you to lead people out of the darkness into his marvelous light. May God use you to bring people out of Satan's clutches and into the loving arms of Jesus Christ. May God use you to impact many lives and do great things for his kingdom. Let's pray. Father God, we are thankful that you have given a ministry to all your children to love others, to help others, to be kind and generous, to be honest and truthful with them, to share your words of hope and life with other people, to help make our families, our communities, our churches, our world a better place. God, use us. Help us, God, to figure out our passions, our skills, our talents. Help us to figure out where we fit best and can serve best in the body of Christ and where we can serve best in our communities and in the way that we can help people around the world the best that we can. Bless our ministries, Lord. Use us to impact others. Use us to grow your kingdom here on earth. And when we die and we go to be with you, reward us for being good and faithful servants. We pray this in Jesus' name. something I'm constantly reminded of is the church is not a place where everybody should come solely to be ministered to, but it is a place that ministers to people so they can then go out and minister to others. We are so much more powerful when we go out into our world and use the gifts and talents that God has given all of us. And it's your gift and your offerings that help us equip those to go out and serve God in our communities, in our country, and in our world. And that's a form of ministry that you can do as well, is giving back to the church so we can help reach as many as we possibly can for God, how we can continue to equip you all, and we can all continue to grow together. So during this special music piece, I invite you to consider how God might be calling you to give that we could better equip ourselves to, min to be his ministers in this world.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for all of the freedoms and blessings that you give us. We thank you that you have called us to be your partners in ministry. God, you want us to all use our gifts and talents to serve you. We pray that these tithes and these offerings are a sweet aroma to you. That you use them to reach the lost, the hurting, the struggling. God, again, we thank you that you use us. You didn't have to, but you wanted to. You wanted us all to be partners in your ministry. God, I pray that you give us all the courage and the boldness to go out and proclaim the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and all of the love and salvation that he brings. We pray this all in his name. Amen. As we move toward the end of our service, we have one final hymn to sing together. It is amazing grace. It can be found on page 378 in your hymnals, uh, or the words can be found on the screens behind me. We're going to be singing verses 1 through 4, and then verse 6. And this time I invite you to stand as you are willing and as, uh, and as you are able. Words are hard this morning. <laughs>
Doesn't he play that thing magnificently? <laughs> Let's give Josh a round of applause. Thank you, Josh, for the Allen from District. Good morning. And I hope all of us realize that God has given us a ministry. Let us take our ministry seriously. And let us go and share what we have experienced. Share what we know about God and his holy word with others. Let's bring the light of Jesus Christ into our dark world. May God use us in mighty and wonderful ways to be a blessing to many. Go in God's power and his grace today and forevermore.